long day. I got a lot to say. It feels like I'm carrying a two-ton weight. I go to see a friend. Hello, I'm Monsignor Patrick Winslow, and I am Father Matthew Cowth, and we are speaking from the rooftop. A podcast brought to you by Ten Books, in which we invite you to join our conversation out here in the open air. Where we look out upon the world around us from the rooftop of the church and share with you what we see. Makes me wanna scream from the rooftop to the screen. Till I know Greetings, Father Winslow. Well, hello. Welcome back to you and to all those who are listening. Well, thank you. I feel adequately welcomed. Good. Now that we have that pleasantry out of the way. <laughs> yes. um, I did want to just take one second before we kind of begin a conversation, just to thank um, Tan Books. You know, they, they have made it so easy for you and I to be able to do this. And we literally have these tiny little devices that we can pop on anywhere we are, yeah. whatever rooftop we happen to be landing on, as it were. And then we literally just give them back and they make all that stuff happen. So, And really, honestly, it sounds like we're in a studio. We're not. We're never in a studio. Oh, no. We're, we're no, anywhere. We are, we, are, anywhere we are on a rooftop, practically. We are anywhere we need the to third be. third floor happen of the to be at a time. Passel Center, looking out over the city <laughs> of Charlotte. Hit at the moment. play, hit record. Yeah. So thanks yeah. to them and all their good work in the church. And all their the, production is fantastic. Yeah. They make it clear. And uh, all we have to do is just take the time, schedule the time, and uh, resume our conversation. And I think some kudos to us. We just did this not long ago. We're, we're, that's good we're, for we're us. Pretty good. This is good. Yeah, I know that's bad. <laughs> because that because that's good for us. That's really kind of a bad. But we should here. do a little more. But anyway, we're working on it. We are uh, attentive uh, to the fact that there are some people out there beside our parents that enjoy <laughs> listening to us. So and besides uh, the kids that are strapped down to a chair that have to listen to us. That's for true. Pennies. That's true. We are a wonderful. If form you do this again, you're going to have to listen to from the rooftop of correction for your children. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So all right. So here's what I was thinking about. Yesterday uh, was the Feast of St. Ignatius of Antioch. Yes. And uh, the gospel passage uh, reflected upon how a seed must fall to the die, uh, fall to the ground and die so that it may grow and live. And then uh, there was a further reference from our Lord after that little uh, allusion to the seed about those who love their life will lose it and those who lose their lives will mm. have eternal life, right? And it made me start to reflect upon the mystery of the cross. And, of course, you know, when we're at Mass, we're focused on the cross of our Lord. The altar is an image of the cross. It's the cross on which our Lord is sacrificed. Um, it's also an image of our Lord himself. And the, all these all of these liturgical elements have allusions, various allusions. But truly, the focal point is the sacrifice of Calvary, in which our Lord offers himself as the Paschal mystery for our salvation and redemption. It's so easy sometimes to gloss over the fact that the cross, in its most simplest terms, um, is graphic, hard, painful. Uh, when you look at a crucifix, you cannot escape the reality in which man finds himself. Right. Uh, and that is confronted with the cross as the means to our happiness. And our Lord says time and time again, to the effect, pick up your cross and follow me. Uh, the message, the central message of the Christian faith is that there is no salvation apart from the cross. Uh, we have a sense that we have to appropriate the cross in our own lives. So what then is the cross in our own life? Because I think sometimes we forget the fact that we do have crosses that we have to pick up and follow. And it's easy to just simply say, our Lord did it. Like like the cross is an outsource to our Lord. He took care of the bill mm -hmm. and I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. And that's not how this that's right. works. This I is just, not the thing. I run over to the to, to Golgotha Bank and make an ex <laughs> withdrawal. Well, exactly. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. He didn't, you know, yes, uh, he paid the price. However... We have to follow him, and we have crosses that we have to bear in life. And I also um, am, am aware of the fact that as the as priests and also uh, any any Christian, 
we try to help people bear the weight of their crosses. Uh, we should grow in sympathy, uh, especially because we understand the weight of our own crosses. But the one thing we cannot do is to remove them. Mm -hmm. We can't make crosses disappear. We can't simply say, oh, that's not a cross, put it down. Right. That's not our prerogative to do. In fact, there is no way to salvation for that person apart from addressing the cross that has been laid upon them or that has come to them. And if we attempt to say, no, that's not a cross, that we are actually impeding salvation for that person. And I remember reading in the catechism some time ago, and it was a reference to the Antichrist. And it was alluding to the fact that the Antichrist and the references in Scripture to Antichrist are not to a single individual historical person, but really to a spirit of the world right. that says <clears throat> salvation is possible apart from the cross. Apart from the cross. And it truly is the spirit of the Antichrist who is going to whisper in the ears of everyone, that's not a cross. That's right. You don't need to lift that. You don't need to approach that. We can relieve you of that burden. And that is a scary yeah. thing yeah. that happens, I think, all too often in every generation, I think very much in our own. That to, and I get it. There's a temptation of a compassionate person to say, I don't want you to have that cross, but it's not helpful. In fact, it's actually collaborating with an antichrist spirit yes. to say that you don't need to suffer a cross. And literally, it's not compassionate. Yeah. Right? If the word itself means, I'm going to suffer with you. Right. Um, it's, I don't want you to suffer, so I'll remove that for you. And I'm not going because I'm not going to suffer with you. <laughs> right. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to get under that cross that's with right. you. I'm just going to tell that. you to put it down. It's yeah. not a real cross. Yeah, that's we find this to be the case across the board in those hotbed issues. Yeah. Right. That where people have difficulty with the church's teaching on X, Y, or Z, you know, and speak about something a very obvious one that I think everyone is is can be ho rightly horrified by is is the acceptance of abortion, and the mantra, of course, is that. I can remove this cross from myself um, mm -hmm. by, by killing an innocent child. But the flip side is true, too. If I'm going to have compassion, this is the, the great work that Miravia is doing. If Those of you who don't know, we have a wonderful home here for unwed mothers that we care for them, help them with their college education, etc., to assist them to bring this child um, to the light. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're fantastic. The, the option of adoption is there or to keep the child, etc. But um, that real compassion is, I'm, I'm in this with you. Yeah, I'm going to dive into this thing with you and I'm not going to leave you. And every cross has injustice involved, mm -hmm. right? Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our, our, our Lord did not create an unjust world uh, for the rest of us to endure crosses. Right? <laughs> Rather, we introduced sin, the spirits, the angels, well, the, the spirits introduced sin into the equation, into their realm, certainly, then it cascades into our realm. So all of the injustices are cascading out of this gift of freedom from these creatures that God has created. Yeah. And it, it creates for these crosses. Yeah. It creates for crosses that might be biological. It, we could have uh, physical ailments. We could be suffering. I mean, it's, it's tragic, especially when we see a child right. suffering from a cancer or a baby born in such a despairing condition. Or for that matter, just the regular... Ravages of age, which you and I are becoming more and more familiar with. And well, you're more familiar with it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, all, all of those things, they can be crosses that are circumstantial, right? That there are consequences of, you know, one, two, or even ten different injustices that, that, that seem to befall us. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we have those crosses that are emerging out of our own brokenness. They're deeply rooted within us um, and they need yeah. to be addressed. And perhaps those are the hardest. And I think those in the end are the ones that we want to deny our crosses at all. Yeah. Um, but the reality is you can't have the cross, which is the means to salvation, apart from having to suffer in some type of injustice, right? Because that's where this friction is coming from. Am I getting something wrong? Yeah, no, no, no. I think it's great. I, I just, I, I was trying to recall the name of 
the chapel in Orvieto, the famous chapel. It's Signorelli, I think. Um, and if you walk into the beautiful Duomo in Orvieto, Italy, in Umbria, on the right side, uh, maybe it's still Lazio, I don't know, it's Umbria or Lazio, I can't remember. On the right side is a chapel, the Signorelli Chapel. And there's all kinds of amazing paintings in there. But one of them is of the Antichrist. Mm. And you've seen it before, I'm sure. But what's fascinating about the image is that when you see it for the first time, there are these men that are clearly preaching or doing something. Mm-hmm. And Christ is with them. And Christ has his hand raised. Um, and you think that it's Christ. Mm. But then you look closely at it. The, the hand that's raised on, the, on Christ is actually a hand of someone else underneath his fold raising his hand. And you can't see who it is. Um, so it's the person that looks like Christ, as Scripture says, the Antichrist is the one who denies Christ in the flesh. He looks like him, but he's not him. And how do you know? Because he doesn't have any wounds. Yeah. He doesn't have any wounds. Like the denial of Christ in the flesh and that flesh having been sacrificed on the cross. Yeah, I was, I was teaching. And that's the same. And I, I, I'll no, let you get right back. But yeah. That's the same too, right? So we who must follow him, we have to have wounds ourselves. That's right. In the sense that we surrender and we sacrifice ourselves in, in, in an act of surrender in a pattern and a manner of our Lord. Obviously, we do it kicking, screaming, crying, denying. Sure. And all, all the many things that we do as, as fallen people. But in the end, there's only one way. Yeah. But you were saying you were excellent. Well, a number of things. I mean, one is that he doesn't just say to carry, right? But, but that sort of embrace of it, whatever the thing is that you have. You, you pick that thing up. Yeah. You draw that thing to yourself. This was sort of manifested in that movie, The Passion, where Christ sort of lovingly caresses the yes. cross. Like he wants it. Um, not because it's an instrument of pain, because, but because it's a, it's a, it's a pathway. It's a means. Uh, as he said, I, for the sake of the joy that laid before him, he endured the cross. And so you're handed this thing. Whatever ailments you have, whatever psychological, physical difficulty, whatever family problem you've got, whatever internal the, conflicts, internal conflicts, um, struggles with temptation, certain sins, yeah. etc. Um, the beauty of the church's teaching on sin is that it just says, "Aha, that's this." That means that's your cross. Yeah, you know what it is, and you've got to embrace it. Not embracing mm-hmm. it in terms of <laughs> engaging it, right? Uh, but on this, on the contrary, to say I'm going to suffer this, and just like all the statuary that we have in the iconography of the church, the saints are always holding the instruments of their passion. That that became the thing that was almost like a trophy that they're holding up in the dome of the church. You know, whether it's Lucy with her eyes, or um, you know, the, the, right. the saints with Lawrence with his gridiron, or whatever else. Yeah, he suffered something, and that became glorified right and it's not just the instruments of martyrdom it's the thing that's hurting you on the inside right i mean and you you, you manifestly see the injustice i mean it's unjust that somebody takes yeah. your eyes out yeah. or you know burns you on a gridiron or crucifies you 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 see the manifest injustice but you were seen as love and faith conquering yeah love faith faith, faith hope and love conquering in all of it you know, in, in, but we live in a day and age where the spirit of the Antichrist is very loud. Yes. Or the voice of it. Because how often do you hear, oh, that, oh, come on, get over that. That's not a sin. It's 2020. It's two, right. Did allocution. Exactly. Somehow that's a sin, great argument. Somehow sin got removed because it's a, because the of calendar this year. changed. It, that's right. All is different because of one year. So the, the, the difficulty is raising children, raising a family, leading a flock, a parish, a diocese, a church. When you have so many voices that take on the voice of the Antichrist telling you day in and day out, give in to your whim. Mm-hmm. These aren't crosses. Well, you don't need to suffer them. You don't need to suffer them. Um, if you went the way of the world, there would be no cross. That's right. And it gets couched, and you can see how easily, as compassion, as you were mentioning earlier, because obviously nobody wants to see another one suffer. I don't want to see Jesus on a cross. Yeah. I don't want to see a saint martyred. That's horrific. And of course, we should all recoil at the idea. But the reality is uh, there are injustices that arrive at our doorstep or sometimes deeply embedded within us 
and when we can when they when we meet them when we in, um, encounter them it's either we surrender to them in the sense that uh, we don't pick them up as crosses rather we ourselves are ultimately becoming puppets of them of whatever these things are in yeah. our life or we embrace the cross as you were saying in the pattern of our lord even should we fall time and time and time yeah. again but we seek to say we seek that which our lord is leading us through but what we can't do is ignore its reality yeah either you just say either you say there there's no need to embrace a cross do your own thing but whatever that thing is is always going to be in front of you or you say this is a cross and I need to embrace it. And the only way I can move forward is to follow in the pattern of our Lord and mm-hmm. to embrace the cross. Now, am I making... Am I it does, yeah. Coded? And the words you're using are interesting, right? I mean, in some sense, you can say that some of the vehement and vociferous behavior of everyone who has denied sin and the cross, what are they attempting to do but to make everyone else embrace their choice? Right. Yeah. They're thrusting it upon us to say, yeah. you must embrace and celebrate my choice. Right. Um, and our job, as St. Paul said, I preach Jesus Christ and him crucified, which sounds like a sounds like a dour gospel, right? But mm-hmm. look at it. Maybe another way to frame it, it would be this. I was asked once, you know, classically, I, we live in the South, and so you have Catholics will wear crucifixes and you have right. Christians that will wear crosses. And, mm-hmm. and so a Christian asked me, you know, why do you insist on keeping him on that cross? And my, I didn't even think about it. My simple answer was because, because that's where I live. Right. That's where I have to live. I'm not in a glorified state. Right. And it got me thinking. There's this wonderful passage in St. Thomas's work, the Summa Contra Gentiles, uh, book four. And he's talking about God becoming man, whether it's fitting to have the incarnation. And he says... Just such a beautiful paragraph. You wouldn't think St. Thomas would say this like this. But he says, how do you induce anyone to love you? First of all, man is in need of being induced to love God, the God whom he cannot see. How do you induce anyone to love you? And Thomas has different sort of motives of love. One of them is is beauty. Um, It just captures us for a moment. Um, Another one is, is, is likeness or similitude. And he says that in order to induce us to love him, um, God took on human nature. So he looks like us, Mm -hmm. who were made to look like him. That is beautiful. And then he goes further in his commentary on Mark's gospel. Why is it the centurion at the cross the one that says, surely this was the, the son of God? Like why, when he's suffering the most mutilated, mangled body on the cross, why does that manifest that he's the son of God? Right. Because no one else can love like that. And so he, Thomas doesn't quite say this, but he kind of a gloss to say that um, he who knew no sin became sin. So not only did he, did he take on the likeness of us in terms of human nature, but he took on the likeness of our sin. Mm-hmm. So like, that's what you look like. And yeah. I'm taking it to myself. That's real compassion. Right. I'm going to look like you actually look. You're 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 fastened and tied down to dead things. You're mm-hmm. stuck. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that. So that every time you and I attempt to, to, to identify with Jesus and and to embrace that cross, I'm simply saying, I want to participate in this. I want to look like you who look like me. That's a real motive of love. So that I can become glorified, yeah, yeah, right. So that these wounds can be healed in the way that they're healed in the resurrected yeah, form, yeah, which is they're transformed; uh, they don't disappear. It's one of the reasons that we typically have crosses that are gold. It's it, it's a, it's an odd uh, sort of oxymoron, mm-hmm. right? You've got the most ugly thing, the mm-hmm. crucifixion, and then it's gilded, right. as if to say there's hope on the other side of this. Um, exactly and you know and this is the whole this is at the center of the mission of the life of the church yeah absolutely. the church authentically cannot do anything else than to acknowledge the cross is the means of salvation the cross right. of christ 
but also the crosses that we must pick up and follow after him. We are not in the business of of tr- trying to tell people or getting um, they're speaking to uh, uh, categories of people and saying no, these aren't real crosses, and that's not a real cross. Or you know what, that's not a real cross. You don't have to suffer that. You don't have to suffer this. You don't that's have to a suffer gift. That. Yeah. Well, it is a gift, but <laughs> it's like no, actually, we do. Yeah. You know, and then so, and again, the they're all, they're all they're they're all different, but we have to be able to speak clearly. Okay, we know the path of righteousness. We can articulate that. You look to the Ten Commandments. You look at you look to the Gospels, and we have our moral content, and we say, okay, this is the path. And when we are inclined to do the things contrary to that path, we know that somewhere deep, deeply embedded in us is a cross we're going to have to manage. There's no other way. You just you just don't make you can't make those things disappear. Uh, they have to yeah. at least be addressed in such a way. You say, "All right, Lord, uh, I see I see the path of righteousness before me. I understand how you call men to yourself. I understand that we are all broken. I understand that we um, don't measure up. I understand that I need a savior, <laughs> and I need a savior. And these are crosses that I'm going to have to deal with. Yeah. Um, and the way in which I deal with them is." To try to carry them with him, yeah, and he's in yeah. there where he says that his, you know, his, his burden easy and his burden is light. Right? Yeah, the yoke, yeah, that double yoke, because that's just it. I mean, we're only ever really a Simon, right? Whatever we're bearing, whatever we're carrying, he already did that, yeah, um, and is doing that. He's just asking that you participate in that. And in some sense, again, this is going back to something Saint Thomas said that I love. Um, it's more in keeping with the dignity of the human creature to make him a partaker in his own salvation. Mm-hmm. Isn't that true? It like is, if yeah. you could do something to get yourself out of the mess, to undo the, the, your mm-hmm. own sinfulness and what have you, to be a real participant in that, you would. Like if you could do, have any way, shape, or form to make up for something that you did, think about whatever the worst that sin is you think you've ever done and who you hurt. Like if you could take it back, you would. If you could reverse course and, and just stop it and say, I want to heal that. I want to make that new. And Christ says, you can, right? actually. But what you're talking about is, I was this way when I did it. I am this way now where I regret it. Yep. But something happened between points A and B. Yep. It's a transformation. It's a process of conversion. Yep. And it's only attained by embracing the cross. By embracing and so the cross. The cross isn't just this, you know, white knuckle this thing. Right. It's actually changing you. It's changing you. you. It's transforming, it's transforming you. That's and it. you are becoming uh, who, you, who God intended. Yeah, the you moment that you have not just the regret of I got caught or the regret of the punishment right. or the regret of whatever, but I regret the actual act and I, I wish I could undo it. I regret who I was. I regret who I was. And then you can actually begin to spend a life undoing it, not just in terms right. of that particular act, but changing in you and then helping to change the person that's right. next to you and say, I have compassion on you. I know what it's like to suffer this. I'm going to get in there with you. And and as you said in that video we had, um, it, it, it was classic Winslow. Oh, no. um, you were talking about uh, it's not a theological laboratory. Uh-huh. And we track with them real life problems with real people. And because we can't have a guy that gets out there in the priest and says, I can't handle this. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love it when you said that. They caught you on camera for that. It was, it was so you. Um, like, yeah, because people's lives are messy. And yeah. that's what a priest does, is he says to, to Jesus Christ, I'm going to make a response. I'm going to make a return for the gifts that you've given me. I'm going to do this with you. I'm going to place my life at the service of helping people carry their crosses. Because the way of the cross is not only the means by which we reach or the promised land that our Lord has secured for us. But the way of the cross changes us Yep. so that we can be. Yeah. It's not like it's you, you get through the, the American Ninja obstacle course and you right. get the prize. Exactly. The, the course is the thing that alters you. Yeah. And that's what I love. You know, I've been reading St. Thomas a lot lately and reflecting upon him. What I'm really appreciating and loving all the more is that his, um, his moral position is isn't about just following a law. Right. right. It really is about becoming. You know, it's becoming good, which is what we want and we yeah. crave. 
you know, how you become yeah. with the grace of God good. And yeah. uh, it, it's, it sounds so strange to hear that because all we ever really think about in the modern age is a moral law by which we must follow and do. Yep. It's the obstacle course. Okay, we got to do this. I got to yep. do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. And it's, you know, if I do these things, then I get to the other side. Yep. Well, no. And, you know, there are people who are good at doing all those things. I know. They and they're change. nowhere near the other side because they, they are change. not changed. Yep. I yeah. Yeah. It, 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 you know, it looks right, but at <laughs> the same right. time, it's just not right because you have to change. In any event. You know, I anyway. have, um, I have, the wonderful sisters that we have, the daughters of the yeah. Virgin Mother. Is this one of your final things um, before we go? Well, I can do that as a final thing, but it's really connected. Okay, great. Um, you know, when, when we were forming the daughters, the, the, these sisters help us uh, at the seminary. They help in parishes. They were formed as a response to a request from the, the then congregation of clergy to have women consecrate their lives to the sanctifying of the priesthood. This was after the scandals of Boston, et cetera. And so this group was formed out mm-hmm. of that request. Um, but I remember speaking with Sister Marayfield, trying to form the statutes and things of that nature, mm-hmm. hone the charism down mm-hmm. to specific statements. And one of the things we spoke about was, um, I said, you know, priests don't need you to take away their crosses. That right. very thing. The yeah. worst thing you can do for a priest is to make his life cross-free. Right. Because then you've kicked him out of where he's supposed to live. Which and you've is taken the way, and the way his of his means own to salvation. Yeah. I said, so you're, on the contrary, your job is to encourage him to carry it. So don't provide a soft pillow for his head, um, but rather block the exit if he wants to run. Right. <laughs> or, so we have this image of Or the like sisters. Veronica, bring a cloth. Bring a cloth. You can bring a cloth. Yeah. For him to keep going. That's right. Um, you could, it's, like the, the way of the cross is a bit like you know those those, those races you see people do and people handing yeah, water yeah, handing various yeah, things. Exactly. That's a better image. It's a better image. But if he wants to turn around and 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 run for the exit of, right. of Calvary, you block the exit. You just um, say no. Yeah. Father, that's not for you. Well, before we go, yes, I have embarked on a new endeavor. As you know, I I play the violin and play it poorly, um, but I love which it. isn't true. I love the violin. And now we have a, such a musical house. We have a seminarian who is basically a professional clarinet player mm. and flautist. I think that's how you say it. Oh, wow. We have Father Becker with us now who plays the cello and Sister Agnes is learning the cello and Sister Rayfield plays both the harp and the violin. And so the other day, um, they found a woman to teach us, uh, coach us on how to do quartets. No. And... You can do Christmas? Uh, maybe, but the other day I want Christmas. The other day stuff. we did a quartet on a on a Corelli piece, and I couldn't believe it. I've never played with, with I played others. with one person, yeah. But to play with three others, oh, and well, isn't a quartet four? It's four, yeah. So me and so, three others. Oh, oh, oh um, I see. I see. Yeah. So to have to listen to to the other persons, yeah. um, and coordinate that, you hit a sweet spot if you're getting it right, where you. I almost stopped playing. I actually did stop playing once listen. because I want to listen to it. Yeah, I couldn't believe what was happening because I'm, I'm not that I'm not that good, and not, they're not that good. Did um, you have to have someone? We had you? someone with us who was good. But um, were, were they, was somebody directing? you? No, but you can with a quartet. You don't really need to. You can it's kind sense of sense your conductors came when 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 pieces got so complicated with so many different instruments. So quartets and are enough. You can hear yeah. each other. But it was a wild experience. All right. My request is I want a few pieces. A few pieces of Christmas music. I do. Okay. I really, really do. Christmas, I think Silent Night. Christmas Party 2023. Let's do it. I mean, I can provide the words in my head. So all I need are the strings. The strings. You got it. You come to the party? Absolutely. Yeah. And I will bring my instrument. Oh, the kazoo or? No, spoons. Triangles. Spoons. <laughs> my, my spoons for the for the bowls of ice cream. <laughs> the bowls of ice cream. <laughs> they make a lovely sound. A very encouraging one. Oh, all right. Before we go, well, um, I'm going to be headed off here, spend a few days with my parents mm. and some friends. So I uh, get a little vacation time ahead of me. I'm looking forward to that. And I, I I'm just really grateful. I think uh, that we oftentimes don't maybe appreciate our vacations as as we should yeah and uh i think i'm arriving to a stage in life where uh 
I, I really do appre- appreciate them. I mean, I'm not saying people don't enjoy their time off or things like that, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like I've done a lot of vacation throughout my years, over 50 years of life. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's a lot of more work than in reward. And, yeah. you know, sometimes you go in it with high expectations and you don't get the same out of it as you would hope. Yep. But at this point... I guess what I'm saying is I've learned how to maybe approach a vacation. Okay. Which is where it's not the expectations are low, but they're appropriately aimed. And it's it ties into a prayer life. Mm. It ties into a spiritual life. Mm. It ties into, you know, all of these things. So you're escaping the regular routine. You're doing something different and interesting and fun. But at the same time, it's not a break from the things that are important. It is a continuous flow with those things that are important. And I think that that's where I think, you know, many times in the past, where I've had a lot of mistakes with vacations. It's just, you think of it as sort of an exit. Right. right. Uh, but you, deep the down cessa- you realize, I'm not supposed to be exiting. Activity and an exit. And... Yeah, it's like, I'm not supposed to be exiting these things. You know, these, you know, I'm not supposed to just get my prayers in, right? The minimum or things like that. I'm actually yeah. supposed to yeah. have these things with me because... They make my vaca- vaca- vacation better, right? And when your you vacation take better, as you were. Well, that's true. And your vacation say. better. But you know, like for example, we've had these experiences where we've traveled. Yeah. And we've uh, spent a, a fair amount of time focused on time to pray at churches yeah. and pray together. Yeah. We have these crazy things happen. Those and are the best stuff. vacations. And we say, you know what? God has us on a plan. Like we surrender. Yep. And most amazing things happen. We won't get into it now because it's a before we go. But that said, it's it's like that. You know, there's a way to vacation well. It's not about setting high expectations. It's not about creating the idyllic thing. But it there's there's certain parts of you that need to always be with you, even on vacation. Let's put a bookmark there. Yeah. That might be the, something to talk about All right, good. Um, when we come back. Oh, it's a teaser. It's a teaser. Cliffhanger. All right, very good then. God bless you all. Ciao. Makes me wanna scream. Thanks for listening to this episode of From the Rooftop. For updates about new episodes, special guests, and exclusive deals for From the Rooftop listeners, sign up at rooftoppodcast.com. And remember, for more great ways to deepen your faith, check out all the spiritual resources available at tanbooks.com. And we'll see you again next time. From the Rooftop. Rooftop.